Welcome to Behind the Glass with Dean Cerniels. Today's show, we're going to show you how to put smoke inside a cocktail so you can shake up the smoke and actually add it to the flavor of the cocktail without buying any fancy tools or any fancy tubes and uh, machinery and all that kind of stuff. Very, very simple way to add smoke to a cocktail. After that, our bar trainer today is a relative newcomer to the industry. Linnea Lind joining us to round out our Ladies Month here on Behind the Glass with Dean Cerniels. Today's trick of the day, you'll see that smoke inside that glass. I want you to see and learn how to put smoke inside a cocktail. So that we can create an extra special experience and flavor profile for our guests at the bar. But first, let me show you how to make this cocktail. Today's bar trick, here is the solution. I have a piece of uh, barrel from this small barrel. I use this small barrel to, uh, to do some aging with, some cocktail aging. You'll see actually in, uh, in March, I've got some more videos on, uh, on YouTube on how to barrel age a cocktail. However, I've used this old barrel and I've taken a piece of the barrel, the barrel head. So to put the smoke inside the cocktail, first we have to make the cocktail. Here's two ounces of Maker's Mark. Thomas Bolton will be joining us in March as well, doing some, uh, well, talking about some bourbon and how to smoke cocktails or how to age cocktails. Sorry, two ounces of bourbon, one ounce of finest call a simple syrup. This is a cane sugar and water. And one ounce of finest call single pressed lemon juice. Just one pressing of lemons put into this. It has a great shelf life on it, unlike real lemon juice. You know what I'm saying? So. Here we shake up the cocktail. Now I've pre-burned the wood so I can get a good, just to open it up and make it burn again more efficiently. You can see how it's warming up there. Let's go to camera two there. You can see how it's really starting to open up the wood opens up the surface area and actually allows more of the wood to burn. Now it has to be kind of quick, so let me get this ready. There we go. Look at that smoke getting inside the glass. You can see it filling the inside of the glass. Now my drink is ready here. All I do now is scoop that over, trying not to lose too much of the smoke, hammer it on, and shake it up again. And let's go to the close up. I'm going to open this up right in front, and you actually see some of the smoke coming out of there. Then I'll just pour this over top of fresh ice, and it gives a beautiful smoky flavor. Now do be careful, you don't want to use a whole lot of smoke, just a little bit. Smoke is not good for you, it's not something that's designed to be uh, ingested. So uh, just a little bit puts a really nice flavor on your whiskey sour or any cocktail that you want to add some smoke to. That's the trick of the day on Behind the Glass with Dean Cerniels. You might roll your eyes, you might even curse it, but you're probably going to use it. Here's tonight's bad bar joke. So the other day, this corn stalk walks into the bar. I turn over him. I said, hey, you want to hear a joke? He looks at me and he says, I'm all ears. On the other side of the camera today, I have a, a young woman who has been bartending for just a short time. However, she entered a bartending competition and bested a number of veteran bartenders from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Please welcome Linnea Lind. Hello, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? 
Very good. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us here on uh, one or behind the glass with Dean Cerniels. Yeah, thanks for having me. I've been looking forward to this a lot. Yeah, yeah, we've been back and forth quite a bit over the last few weeks, and uh, you are actually the inspiration for me doing the whole month of uh, of female bartenders and lady bartenders. Really? Yeah. So. That's awesome. That's really exciting. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got a few surprises for you in uh, in one drink with on Wednesday. So. Uh, tell me, where are you at right now? Um, right now, I'm inside the newest restaurant in Fort Wayne. It's called Mercado. Um, uh -huh. A lot of Cali Mex, Cali Mexi uh, food vibes, and we're really pushing the agave spirits here. So we've got nice. um, a really great layout of mezcals, tequilas, absolutely everything. Like everything is great. This Beautiful. is my favorite, best place I've worked at so far. Right. It looks like a beautiful place. And when do you open? Are you just opened? We opened about three and a half weeks ago. Okay. We had our soft opening, uh, yeah, about three weeks ago. And it went really well. And then we started, we opened up. And lunch and dinner are a little bit different, totally different menus. But everyone's really receiving it well. The cocktails have been going over really well. And we've Good. had a lot of people in here trying mezcal for the first time, like never even giving it the time of day. And then they try it here. And like, right. I mean, it's really is explosion in your mouth, like flavors on everything you want. It's crazy. I love it. I love it. Uh, all right, Linnea, we are going to have you on uh, One Drink with Linnea Lind uh, later this week. However, this is Behind the Glass, and I'm going to give you 10 minutes to teach us something, anything, whatever it is that, uh, that you would like to share with, uh, with the world. Uh, we'll get that started. What is it that you are going to be covering for us today? All right, so today I thought that I would talk about um, different types of dilution and why we do them. So okay, very good. I'm going to have about three different things laid out right here. We're going to do okay. one thrown, one shaken, and one stirred. I'm just going to be using water for this so that I'm not just using liquors to use them. But I'll use the yeah, same amount of water absolutely. as each one, and we'll be able to see the different dilution between each one. And then after we shake, throw, and stir. We'll see the different dilutions that happen. And Wonderful. what the outcome So that's just one ounce each? Uh, I did four ounces each in each. Four container. ounces each. Sorry, I missed that. Good. So we'll start with the shaking. Uh, uh, so for shake. the shaking cocktail, really, um, anything that's going to have citrus in it, you're really gonna make sure you wanna throw it, or shake it, I'm sorry, to really get it incorporated and kind of break up those ice cubes a little bit. I know everyone's a little bit different, but um, whenever I have a cocktail that's served up in a Cooper or martini glass, and it has those little particles of ice cubes that are breaking up when you shake, I really, right. it, I feel like it just makes my experience drinking the cocktail a little bit better, but not everyone's like that. Some people like to find strain out the ice cubes, but it still makes really nice. Dilution just. All right. So that's the first one. So you're uh, you poured four ounces of water and then the ice cubes, and now you're going to pour out the remainder, and we'll measure it to see how much water was added from shaking. We'll see where we are left off after each one, because so I said citrus for. Any cocktail that has citrus in it, you're definitely going to want to shake. But I know um, Negroni's most of the time, classic cocktail, equal parts of gin, sweet vermouth, and Campari, is oftentimes a thrown cocktail. And it, oh, it's pretty hard to get down. I'm definitely still not, still some improvement to have. I haven't had anybody throw a cocktail on this show yet. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. So you're the first. We have our Hawthorne strainer in here with the ice cubes. Some people have it, do it in the small one, but I like to do it in the big one. You just start here. Kind of just a back and forth. And usually when you're um, doing it with your liquor, you want to keep going about uh, five to six times back and forth or until you see a little bit of froth appear in your liquor. I'm definitely spilling some because, you know, 
We're learning. We're always learning. So describe to me what happens to the liquid that's inside the shaker tins uh, while that so, process is happening. By throwing, rather than shaking, when the ice is always hitting that liquid back and forth, back and forth in the same container, it's continually being um, diluted with the ice cubes breaking up and becoming smaller and diluting it a little bit faster. But when you have more high octane cocktails like your Negroni or uh, your old fashioned, which is traditionally stirred or just built up depending on how you like it. Um, it's just a way to dilute it without diluting it way too much. So when you're pouring it here, some of that ice has been able to melt in here and then, but the dilution has stopped as soon as it is in here. Right, right. So you're able to just kind of watch how the dilution can happen. And even on this one, we see glasses are a little bit foggy, but this is the one that was done with shaken. And this right, is the one so that we've done see a with the grill. It's a slight difference, but when it comes to making those cocktails, you definitely, the dilution matters. Otherwise, and uh, and as far as I'm concerned, uh, throwing a cocktail is as much about flair as anything. Uh, That's all. It, it may, it's cool. People always are watching it. They're like, holy crap, it's awesome. It's just definitely yeah. one of those things that make people like to watch the bar more. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, uh, I know what flair is all about, so. All right, I won't stop you. Keep going. No, but your flair, like, I've been trying to get into flair, but it's just, I'm not coordinated enough at the time being. Uh, so then, well, I, so. Uh, you know, yeah, I was just going to say okay. that if you want to get into flair, I know a guy. Um, All right. So when you're diluting a one of the more high octane cocktails, like growing or with this dilution, and then here we have our stirrers. There's some that have a spoon on one end, and then this little eye drop at the end. We have just both eye drops here because it makes it super easy to stir not only one but two cocktails at a time so we're able to bust out cocktails and no one's waiting more than five six minutes before they're drinking them so whenever you do this you usually give it about 30 stirs to get to the dilution that you want and this may be slightly off because i let did let it sit there for a minute while we were right. talking i interrupted i apologize no you're all good it's all about the conversation right yeah, there you go. That looks beautiful. I love it. So yeah, just you can see. Um, so shaken, thrown, and then stirred. All three different layers of the dilution process happening. Because depending on the type of cocktail you're making, you don't want every single one to be diluted um, the same amount between margarita and daiquiri, those are gonna be higher dilution that you want, but then when it comes to Manhattan, Negroni, any of those more high octane served on the rocks or neat, uh, definitely you want less dilution there. So this puts the bartender, this gives the bartender more control over how much dilution there is, depending on the spirits they're using and the temperature of the spirits or, or the, the proof of the spirits as well, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Cause I mean, if you're making, I keep coming back to the Negroni because it's one of my all-time favorite cocktails. I have a yeah, pin absolutely. here that says uh, Negroni's for my homies. Um, <laughs> you definitely like if you you don't want to shake any cocktail that is all spirit because there, right. there's no reason. Uh, you're just going to dilute it too much and even just stirring it gets all those flavors incorporated wonderfully without over diluting and changing the whole flavor of the cocktail. Right. Spirits of any kind, sugar, water, or bitters. That's the definition of a cocktail. We need to have that dilution in there. That's, uh, oh, yeah. That looks great. So how much do you think is the difference in each of those? Maybe half an ounce or an ounce? or I would say quarter ounce? Uh, it's the throwing and the shaking had less of a difference than I thought they would. I'd say it's probably about a three-quarter ounce difference there. But okay. even from the throwing to the to the stirring that we did, I'd say that's another, that's about a one ounce difference as well. All right, very good. So when, you, uh, when you're adding water to a cocktail, how much water do you think uh, is best to add to a cocktail? 10%, 20% or? Anywhere from about 20 to 25%, I would say. Okay. Depending, yeah. uh, the 20, 25 kind of depends on what the person, the flavors that they want to come through. Do they want it to be like, right. Uh, a strong punch of the sit of the citrus that's in there or do they kind of want it to be mellowed out a little bit so that's where that kind of can change very good that's pretty awesome 
Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Linnea Lynn. Thank you very much for sharing that. That was great insight. I got the Thank crowd in the did. background cheering her on. Come on, guys, let me hear you. <laughs> they were. <laughs> I got Yeah, Linnea's got a whole cheering section on back there. Hey, Linnea, uh, have you got a chance to, have you got a time for a little magic trick, maybe? I would love to see magic trick. All right, I've got a magic trick here, and the guys can come around and watch it too if they want. Um, it's just a couple of elastic bands here. You've uh, you've seen elastic bands, of course, right? A couple times. See, what I like to do is I like to show some magic to encourage bartenders to start learning magic because simple things like this can be real reputation makers and uh, and get people to join you behind the bar. You see how I've linked both those uh, elastic bands into each other? Yeah. Yeah, so it's locked onto each other. So, I mean, I can pull it both ways, but what happens is if I go real slow, I can actually pull it apart just like so. <laughs> All right. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to see if I can switch my camera and go, how, how's that? That's beautiful, isn't it? I'm, I'm uh, going to look to see if yeah, I can figure yeah. out how you do it. Here we go. We're going to drop this in. See how it's locked on there, right? And, and, and I, I can go to my, I go down to my fingers and it doesn't come off. And I can go up to my thumb and it doesn't come off. And I, I can pull it either way and it just doesn't work. But if I go real, real slow here, I can actually make it come off like so. How's that? That's insane. Yeah, I, even close up, I can't tell what you did. Okay, phew. <laughs> <laughs> So, Linnea, is this your correct uh, social media? We can track you down there and follow your journey. Yep, that's me. All right. Linnea Isabel, and you're at Mikado. FW is Fort Wayne, right? Yes. Fort Wayne, Indiana, and the Mikado Restaurant. Very good. Thank you very much, Linnea. We'll see you on One Drink With on Wednesday, where it's One Drink With Linnea Lynn.